Um, a couple of weeks ago I put a post up on Facebook basically showing um, how many feathers I could get off of one duck. And it was a duck that a friend got for me and uh, I had a lot of interest in it. Um, you know, uh, fo fo you know, following, um, following the, putting it up, a lot of people contacted me, PM'd me, private messaged me, um, got in touch with me, and basically asked me how to know, how did I know what feathers to take off the duck, and um, would I mind demonstrating um, uh, how to do it? And you know, it basically got me thinking, and uh, been happy to to help people out, and happy to teach uh, people. I said, it got me thinking, and I decided I'd make a, a video on it. So, um, I put a request out to a friend to see if he could get me a couple of ducks so I could start making the video. Now, it's taken a couple of weeks to, uh, to, for him to come back and get the ducks because they weren't that plentiful. But he, he quite happily obliged and uh, he, um, he got me a couple of ducks. 15, in fact. Um, so, it was a lot of ducks. Um, so, far too many more than what I need to make this video. But, how and ever, look, we'll, um, and you can, you can see there, there's a... A couple of hanging behind me there um, with uh, a couple of pheasants, but you know, um, they'll all be processed. We'll get the feathers off them, they won't go to waste, um, but we'll eat the meat, okay? But back to this. So, um, yeah, um, so my friend he got me the ducks, and uh, so I'm, I'm gonna basically demonstrate how to, what feathers you're going to take to, to tie flies. Um, and if, if you're into fly tying, uh, obviously watching this video you're a fly tire, but if you do a bit of hunting, then what better way than to start harvesting your own feathers? You know, we all, um, we all, we all say that um, fly tying, um, nothing like it, catching a fish on, the t on, on, a, fi on a fly that you tie. But t when, you, when you start harvesting your own materials and start making your own materials, um, getting your own feathers, you're taking that one step further, so, you know, you're, you're, harvesting your feathers, you're tying flies with it, you're actually catching fish, you're taking it one step further, so the satisfaction is, is getting better, you know, you're getting that, that, that joy out when there's nothing like it, so, um, every feather on a duck can be used to tie flies, okay, so, there is no specific feathers that, um, that, that can only be used, um, it's, it's down to, down to the person. If you're an individual that likes to experiment on, on flies, um, you know, he likes to create his own flies, or he likes to do a, do a, you know, a spin-off of a pattern that he's seen, 100%, um, you know, f duck feathers are really good for that, okay, they're a really soft feather, um, are a great feather to use to fly tie, to tie flies with, and personally one of my favourite to, to, to tie. And then, whether you're tying dry flies, wet flies, or even nymphs, Duck feathers can be used for it a lot. Okay, um, we'll start basically, and I'll turn it around. Um, we will start with the CDC feathers, and I actually have a clump of them here just to show. So, the CDC feathers. These are one of my favorite feathers. These are a must for me. Okay, I tie an awful lot of flies with these. Um, they're they're my favorite. Probably my 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 fly box is probably ninety nine percent. CDC flies, okay. Um, I, I can't seem to get enough of the CDC feathers, so I generally, when I'm when I'm starting to process the, the duck and taking the feathers off for the fly tying, I I always start with the CDC feathers, simply because when I I find if you start going in, basically ripping feathers left, right, and center, um, it starts to get a bit messy. It can get messy when you start at it, and what happens is the CDC feathers can can get um, torn out by accident because they're hidden in there. Um, they're hidden amongst all the other feathers. They're down with the duck down in 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 the duck. So you know it's quite easy to get them. And then it's just there's not more frustrating than trying to go through all the duck down and other feathers and try to pull out your CDC. So that's why I always start first and I always take that out. So to locate the CDC feathers for anyone that's not familiar or the cul de canard feathers, anyone that's not familiar with with the duck anatomy, there's a gland down here on the tail of the duck, and it's basically called the preen gland or the eye gland okay and basically what you have to do if you I can find the first time because I'm used to doing this and it's just literally here okay but if you're not used to pulling feathers out of ducks um, and rooting through for what you want it's going to take a little bit of finding but you'll find it it's just above the tail feather okay and if you lift where 
the green hue on the tail starts. So you have you have these shoulder feathers, back feathers coming down onto the tail feathers. Um, and there's, you, you'll see it there, there's a green hue, you probably can't see it in the camera, but there's a green hue or a nice green reflection, green kind of a colour on the tail feathers down here. Okay, and just where they start is that bunch there is where you want to lift. And often when you lift them, you'll see the first set of CDC feathers coming up, which are these ones here. Okay, now the oil gland is situated down in the middle of all that and if I can pull them all out and find it you'll see it out there. So that little black clump of feathers, so the separate all CDC feathers. So that little black clump of feathers down in the in on the skin there, that is the preen gland or the oil gland. And often or not, if you've ever observed a duck, a duck, you'll see him scratches that part of the oak and then he rubs his head all over his what he's doing is he's getting oil on his beak and he's essentially rubbing waterproofing his feathers and that's essentially um, what, what it is and because the CDC feathers or the Kulda canal feathers are located down in the preen gland or the oil gland um, they're naturally waterproofed and that's what makes them such a good good feather to tie with okay and personally one of my favorites so um, you won't get an, a great deal of feathers on a, a CDC feathers on a duck. Um, some ducks have more, some ducks have less. You'll probably you'll average between ten and twenty feathers per duck. Okay, depending on the duck. Okay, um, but again, look, you just you'll take them, just pull back them feathers, and you can pull them out in the clump. And we'll just put them there with the the other ones. And again, just separate the separate the tail feathers. You want to lift the tail feathers and just underneath them tail feathers um, you'll get all your CDCs and we'll put all the CDCs out they're, they're quite you know you, you're, if you're used to fly time with them you'll, you'll identify them very quickly but they're all around that preen gland and like just like that then I've actually taken every CDC feather there is so I've probably got about there's quite a lot enough actually I've probably got about a good 25 feathers there in that one um, but you can see that there now. So if I turn that back around, you can see that the duck is actually bare there now, um, where I've pulled all them CDC feathers out. Of. And there you can actually see, um, if I pick it up, you can actually see the eye gland there now properly. Okay, that's the eye gland. These feathers here, again, are the tail feathers I was talking about with the green hue, which are these ones here, um, which I pulled off of a duck previously before I made this video, or I started recording this video. Um, these are really good, okay. Really good uh, tail feathers here, and they come off in a clump. So if you get your hand underneath them and lift them in a clump, they'll actually come out in, in one go. So you can just put the wings out of the way and tail lift them there. If you get the and just put your hand underneath them, just like that, and pull. Actually, pull a little bit of flesh off there, but that's no problem, and they'll come off in one go. And again, like these are really good. I like I like to use these for um, that kind of wet fly where I'm putting in a, a tying in a or even a, in a, a dry fly where I'm tying in that little bit of a, a hackle. I'll tie it in like a partridge feather, and it gives a nice green hue off the the, the feather. A lovely, lovely effect to the fly. And you know the trout do the trout will hammer the flies that you use these for. Um, so. There's the smaller ones then as you come down take them as well because they do have that little green fleck of colour on them and they're quite good. The tail feathers here, you can use these. I don't I don't take them myself. I never I, I have taken them and I've got a quite a lot of them, but I don't take them myself. Like I and like I said, every feather on the duck can be used to tie flies, okay? So um, it just comes down to what you want to use. I myself, I'm going. To, I'm not going to pull every feather off the duck today. I'm only going to take the main ones that I I actually use myself. Um, but I will go through. So if you look, coming back up. So we've taken the CDC feathers off the back down here. Um, and as you're coming up now, where the wings are, you've got your back feathers coming up into your shoulder feathers. Okay. Um, really good feathers as well. And you can actually see the designs on them. You can see the markings on them. So they're they're. A, a really good feather like you, you know you can use all these as well um, if you just pull one or two there you'll actually see the markings on them they're really really good feather 
um, to use. And again, I will, I will pull. I have pulled them in the past. I'm not going to take them off this duck today because I have quite a lot of them already. But again, another good feather. And as you come up into the neck here, then on the back, um, from the shoulders, again, really good feathers. Now, let's take a look at the ma uh, the bronze feathers. Okay, and the bronze feathers are often what you would get in a shop and they're called bronze mallard often okay um, and uh, it's them feathers here so if we pull the wing out of the way I just want to just pull that wing out of the way and just fold it back so where the wing is here and the back is if I lift it up where the wing and the back is you've got these two You've got the back feathers coming down here, okay, but you've got the wing here, but you've got this grey line of feathers coming down between the wing and the back feathers. That's your bronze mallard feathers, okay, and if you look at them, you just pull the wing out. Now you can pull these individually, okay, you can just pluck these out individually if you want, um, or you can pull them out in a set and keep the right and left, and generally that's what I do. I don't... Um, I don't dye these feathers or anything. I, I, I like to keep these myself, just as personal preference, but I like to keep these um, natural, the natural colour. Um, but if you if you get underneath them, they, these actually, there's a set, like, and you, you see, when you move the wing, you'll actually move the whole bronze matter. But if you get underneath them, if you lift them, you actually, you'll see them from the wing feather. And just pull that wing feather out of the way. Just pull it down out of the way. And then get your hand in underneath the, the bronze matter. Okay, and pull out. It comes out quite easy. It comes out quite easy, and you have them there. And this is what these are here. So I pulled these off a duck earlier on. So these are the right and left that I pulled off earlier on. And again, just keeping your sets there. Okay, and I like to bag them up in sets. I don't like I said I don't dye these um, bronze matter feathers. I like to just keep them natural. I like the colours that they they have, um, but. After you pull that whole set out, there still is some smaller ones at the top of the wing that you you can go ahead and pull out. And these are the individual ones I just done here earlier on. But again, you can pull them out. Don't leave them in. They're a really good feather, really really important feather to use in fly tying. You know, they, they do make some nice wing, some nice uh, flies. Um. Okay. When you turn the duck over then you'll actually have your same same thing again on the other side so same thing again so you'll have your just pulling that wing down just pull that wing down all the way and you'll actually have your bronze mallard here and if you lift it so get underneath it and the whole bronze mallard feather comes up the whole clump of them comes up along you can see it there look so it comes up off the the, the back of the duck or the shoulder of the duck and again just grabbing it and pull up and you can pull the whole thing off in one go so you have your right and your left there and then like like the other side then you know you have a couple of small little feathers up here that we just don't want to leave behind so again we will just pull them out there and pull them all out until you get all your bronze metal feathers out there there's a small few on the top coming around into the flank Again, you don't want to leave them in it, so just they pull out nice and easy. Okay. Um, so that's basically what I would take on the back. And like I said, now you can you can come along and you can take these ones on the shoulder, but it's up to yourselves. As we come under the, the, the so we have the breast and the belly. I like to use all these feathers, so I will. I will pull all these feathers. But often, when you actually buy, you know, I'll come. I'll touch on them in a minute. But if, if you if you lift the wing on the underside, then this is where you get your flank feathers. And like the bronze mallard, they actually do lift up in a clump as well. So you can actually get your hand right up in underneath them, like I'm doing there. Right, get right up until you can't until your hand stops naturally. Don't don't force it, but your feather quills will stop your hand moving. Okay, and then you can pull down on it then. So just try and get them all together. So you might just need to wrestle them in together, but once you got them, okay, so you have all them in in, in your hand like that. So you'll just 
pull down on them and they'll all come off in one go and you'll have your right and left again now with the flank feathers with that clump you take off there and there's a good there's a probably a good 40 if not 50 feathers in that there's an awful lot of feathers in it and um, you're still going to leave the smaller ones behind okay so it's important then that come back and actually take them feathers out now they do like i said they do come out quite easy um they do pull out quite easy so it's important to come back and take all them feathers out you know don't leave them there don't leave them in it um and what i usually do is i'll take them first and then i'll work my way back into the belly then so so they've got a really nice barn on them these uh these um flank feathers so you know they make they do make lovely um lovely mayfly wings and stuff like that um these are the ones quite often i will uh I, or, or i i do die okay I, I die all these these flank feathers so when i'm when i am dying feathers for ducks it's it's usually the flank feathers i'm going to die um and um basically what you can do is i bag them up similar just like you see there so i do bag them up um in left and right the, the, the flank feathers um and then the individual feathers i pull off like i have here um i would bag up just in normal in a normal bag so i will um but again turning the duck over and on the other side again you want that flank feather and you can see them all there look if, if you lift that wing and you can see that dark side of the feathers here and you have all these feathers underneath here these are all the flank feathers and like i said if you get your just get your hands underneath them and lift them they all just lift up in one clump okay so what we do is we pull the wing out of the way and we get our hand up and underneath them like, like i'm doing and just with your thumb just you want to get them move them into position so you're going to be able to pull them and just give the duck, just move that wing out of the way and give the duck a good hold and pull. That was a little bit tough that time, but you get the wheel come out like. And again then, you'll have your right and your left. Again, pull a little bit of flesh out with that, but the flesh will, uh, it won't rot. It'll, flesh will dry. And again then, look, we don't want to leave these ones here, so we just pull them. Like I said. And these, these will be dyed. I'm going to dye all these flank feathers in a later day. Um, I, uh, like I said, I don't dye the bronze matter, but I do like to dye the, the I do like to dye the flank. Um, but again, a couple of small little bronze matter up here on the top that I didn't take. So again, don't don't uh, don't leave them. So it's important, you know, pull them all off. Uh, bronze matter, they're really good feathers. Uh, and I certainly don't like to waste any feathers on a duck. Um, so you can see it there are still nice little flank feathers, small ones there, um, getting up under the wing. Okay, and then coming around, nice little flank feathers here. Okay, and you just you do the same then with the belly. So the belly have a nice. There's a nice feather on the belly. I'm not going to pluck the whole belly for you here now on the video, but you can see there. There's a nice little barn on the belly. It's something not quite as as barred as the as the flank feathers, but it's a it's a nice distinct little little feather as well. And again, I will bag all these up. Um, but quite often, the difference between the quite often when you were buying flank feathers on the internet, and I I only noticed this when I started. Um, when I actually started doing these ducks um, myself, I actually noticed that the flank feathers I actually was buying on the internet were actually belly and breast feathers they weren't actually the flank feathers and that's quite often the case um, unless you're buying from a, a really good reputable um, reputable um, per, uh, company that that you know with fly time materials you know they can they, they will generally provide top tip top uh, materials but I find uh, you know when I, was, when I was buying materials on the internet it was generally when I thought I was getting the flank feathers it was generally the, the breast feathers and that. Um, you know, and the reason, like, uh, thing as well is, you know, th these are good to die because if you, you know, the ducks didn't cost you anything and if you mess up dying these, you know, it's not anything lost. I don't like buying 
feathers and um, buying feathers from from wholesalers or wherever, and then dyeing them because if I mess them up, I'm out of pocket for the money. You know, and quite often, you know, unless you know what you're doing, you can easily mess up um, and destroy feathers, and you know, um, so it's it's for that reason, um, you know, it's that's why I like to to dye the the flank feathers. Um, we're going to move in, I'm going to show you the wings, okay? Now if you look at the wings on the, the mallards, there's a really nice colour on the wings here. Now this this one kind of a little bit shot up on the wing here. It's not a showstopper, but it's a little bit shot up on the wings. Um, so what you can do there is I'll just, after I've harvested them, I, I, will, I will wash the wings down. But you can see here, okay, there's two ways I like to do the wings. Um, it's it really depends on what, what kind of mood I'm in, or it really depends, you know, if, if I'm going to stockpile the wings. Um, you know, if I'm going to stockpile wings as a whole, then I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll lift the bird, I'll lift the wing up, and just as, as close to the body as I can, I will, with the shears, I'll just nip it straight off, okay? Um, but by doing that then, you know, you do need to, uh, you do need to um, clear out all this area here. You need to borax it and uh, preserve it. Um, because it does go quite nasty, quite uh, quite rancid. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do if you didn't want to to preserve the wings, um, the other thing you could do is at the first joint here, you could um, just come in where the primary feathers are, between them, and come to the first joint, and you can actually snip it off just here, where my finger is. And that there doesn't need any preserving, then the wings will dry out properly. Okay, um, I will put up an, another video um, in the coming days on how to do this and how to preserve this. Generally, what I do is I come in here, I cut all this area away, clear out all the meat, and um, what I'll do then is a, a little bit of borax, I put it into a tin, seal it, and I leave it there for about three or four weeks. Uh, come back and the wing has preserved and I stockpile a lot of the wings because um, you know it's, it's handy it's nice to be able to go open up it and have a right and left wing and then just take what I want off it now what I do as well is I like to have um, I like to have a supply of feathers or quills um, ready for when I'm tying so often I, I will you know pluck the feathers out um, just like that and that will give you a nice quill feather. And the quill feather is really really good feather. It's often used, it's quite generally used for fly uh, for wings for dry flies and stuff. So that's all your primary feathers there that will give you all them quills. Okay? Is that them primary feathers along here. So very very good feathers. Um, I also do take these uh, little blue feathers. So if we they're a little bit tough to pull out sometimes but if you pull them out there and again, you see just off the, you see that blue hue off them. Again, really good. And what I like to do with these blue feathers is I'll tie a nice little wet fly. And I, what I do is I, I, I use this blue feather here as a wing casing, both both sides. So I'll take it from both sides, left and right, and have it coming back across the body with a nice little purple or blue hue to it. Um, really nice effect. Okay. Um, so all these feathers here can be used for and generally you know depending as you come down here then you know if you wanted smaller feathers for wings you come back down into the back There's, if you lift the wing on the inside now this is wing is quite badly sharp so it needs to be washed before I do anything but I do take all these little white feathers here as well and if you just they come out quite easy but again these are a nice small little feather and if you're tying size 18 size 20s it gives you a nice little wing set if you're tying a nice little little fly little small fly but again as you come up here you know there's smaller little feathers here but I will generally take all these feathers here on this wing I'll pluck all these feathers out I'll take all the blue feathers and I'll take all the primaries the quills and I'll do the same on the other wing the other wing is not um, as bloody as not a shot up so you can actually see it so if you lift it you'll see the white feathers here so again they're the feathers I'll take and up here on the top of the wing is another few feathers that I will take off it. Okay, coming down, you'll actually see them here. They're in better condition. You'll see the blue, the blue, uh, the blue hue off them. Really nice, and that's that's the wing feathers. And I'll always take and never leave them on a, on a duck. And again, then for your dry fly wings, we take the the primaries, the quills. Um, but like I said, I will put up a video on how to preserve these um, and how to do this properly. Okay, um, the neck feathers you can take. 
So on the back of the neck, coming up onto the front of the neck, you can take the neck feathers. Um, there's a, I, I don't, I haven't, I don't usually take it, but there's a really nice green hue on on the duck's head here. Don't know if you can see it there with the camera, but um, they're really nice feathers as well for small size, like size twenties and stuff. Okay. So it really comes down to what you want to take off the duck, but every feather can be used. Um, but the one feathers I've taken off there are, are the main feathers that um, that you'll generally see in, in shops. Okay, um, and the main feathers that you, you, you'll generally spend quite a fortune for um, in a shop. But you know that, that's that's it. Um, as you come back down towards the bottom, then again, same thing. There's a nice barn on these feathers here that can be used. Okay, um, tail feathers have a nice little curl on them. Really nice little feathers. Again, I don't haven't pulled them in a while but there's a nice the little curly feathers there's about three or four of them at the back of the duck really nice okay so i hope uh hope that's been a helpful video i hope you know you've kind of you've you've got your your just of what to take from from the ducks following this video um i hope i hope it's been helpful um but look thanks thanks for watching and i uh, really appreciate uh, the support um Look, please subscribe, like the video, and uh, if you have any comments or any questions, don't hesitate to put them. Thanks for watching.